Hello, my name is Rob Griffiths. I'm a Clinical Research Fellow in Mental Health Nursing at the Mental Health Nursing Research Unit, which is based at uh, Greater Manchester Mental Health NHS Foundation Trust. And I also work at the University of Manchester. And I'm going to talk today about uh, a theory of human behaviour called Perceptual Control Theory, or PCT. And I'm going to think about how it might be applied to the practice of mental health nursing. A lot of the ideas in this presentation come from a paper that I wrote with uh, Tim Carey, who's a clinical psychologist based in Rwanda. Uh, that was published in uh, the journal Nursing Philosophy earlier this year. And in that paper, we, we sort of um, explored how PCT might advance uh, nursing practice. Uh, so theories are recognised to be integral to healthcare practice. At a basic level, a theory tells you why you're taking one particular um, approach to working with people as opposed to any other approach. And although lots of models of nursing have been proposed, um, which aim to do things like define the, the, the role of the nurse and uh, define what we mean by terms of health and well-being, there's very little convergence between these theories. Um, and actually they've been criticised for the lack of conceptual rigour and clinical utility. Perceptual control theory, or PCT, was developed by Bill Powers, um, who was a medical physicist and engineer. And Bill began working on the theory in the, in the 1950s, and the first papers were published in the early 1960s. And what PCT is, is it's a theory of control, and it provides an account of routine human functioning. And it argues that control is a fundamental property of human life. And actually, uh, the ability to control is what distinguishes living things from non-living things. And uh, crucially, for the perspective of healthcare professionals, um, loss of control is a distressing experience. And depending on what, what it is that uh, the person has lost control of, it's potentially a life-threatening experience. Because we only have 10 minutes to talk about PCT today, I'm just going to give you a, a flavour of some of the main ideas and, uh, that, that the theory proposes. So Bill Powers helpfully um, described the central tenet of the theory in his most famous book, uh, which was titled Behaviour, the Control of Perception. So in it, he argues that um, humans and all living things have internal standards for how they want the world to be. Um, and we might have lots of terms that PCT would consider synonymous with these uh, with, with internal standards. So we might talk about goals or values, hopes, references. Um, but from a PCT perspective, these are all getting at the same central thing. This, the, 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 all of these terms describe uh, a person's preferences for how they would like the world to be. And uh, when the person's experience deviates from their, their, their references or their goals for how they would like the world to be, they act to bring their perceptions back in line with these internal standards. So the purpose of behaviour is to, to maintain people's experiences in line with internal standards and also, crucially, counteract disturbances that would otherwise disrupt our control. So there's a picture of a tightrope walk, walker uh, on this slide, and you can sort of, uh, it's not hard to imagine some of the perceptions he might be controlling. So I guess he'll be controlling his perception of being upright and balanced. And he'll also be counteracting uh, disturbances that might otherwise uh, uh, disrupt his ability to control. So the, the wind, for example, might be blowing him and he might be having to move his body to, to, to respond to that. The way that control is achieved, according to PCT, is through a process called negative feedback. And here's a diagram that hopefully will explain um, how that might work in practice. So PCT would argue that in order to control, the first thing you need is some ability to perceive the world. Um, and we have senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, that enable us to perceive the world. And then we compare our current perceptions, so how we're experiencing the world in that moment, to a reference value for how we would like to experience the world. So if you're having a conversation with somebody and you like to be one metre apart, during the conversation, and the person um, is, is less than one metre apart, there's going to be a difference there between how you'd like the world to be and the way you're currently experiencing. So probably what you would do is you would act to bring your perceptions back in line with your reference. So in the, in the case of the conversation, maybe you take a step back to bring your, your, uh, your perception of the world in line with your reference. 
And th this is what PCT argues is happening all the time, that we're constantly adjusting our behaviour to maintain our perceptions the way they want them to be. So from a PCT perspective, control is its fundamental property of all living things. And on this slide, you can see a whole range of different behaviours that are people engaging in, so people juggling, skateboarding, having a drink. From a PCT perspective, all of these behaviours serve the same function. They are a, people acting to maintain their perceptions in line with their preferences. So if we take one example, the, uh, the, the chap protesting on the bottom right hand corner slide. So he has, he's, he's got a stop Trump sign. So I guess one thing he's controlling at a relatively high level is perhaps something around his political values or the way he'd like society to be structured or um, you know, what he would see as an equitable society. At a lower level, um, he's controlling, actually holding the sign and controlling his arm to maintain the sign where he wants it to be. Um, so this is another important principle of PCT, that the control is hierarchical. And the, the, the higher up in the hierarchy, you get um, more abstract perceptions that people control, so a sense of justice, sense of fairness. And as you work down the hierarchy, you get to more and more basic, concrete uh, perceptions that people control. So the jugglers, for example, will be controlling their arms to move the pins, the juggling pins at a very low level. At a high level, they might be juggling to maintain some sense of satisfaction or well-being or connection with each other. As nurses, I guess one of the things we're, we're most interested in is people's health and well-being. Um, health has been difficult to define and even the most widely cited definition, the World Health Organization definition from 1948 has been uh, widely criticized. Perceptual control theory would argue that health can be understood in terms of control. And there's a quote from Tim Carey, they'd say, which says that control then is central to health, no control is health. So he's basically arguing that control is synonymous with health. That when people have control over social, psychological and biological variables, they would consider themselves to be healthy. So there were, there were another couple of PCT principles that I wanted to cover just briefly that are important uh, when, when we're thinking about applying this theory to healthcare practices. So one is about loss of control and the way that people can lose control. So given that how central uh, control is to health and well-being, it's unsurprising that loss of control is distressing and potentially life-threatening in some situations. And people could lose control for a number of reasons. Uh, but one way that people can lose control is through conflict. And conflict from, an, uh, from a PCT perspective describes internal conflict within, within the person where they're trying to control the same perception, but they have two reference values for the state of that perception. So if you were to imagine a thermostat, uh, it would be a bit like a thermostat being sat, set at 20 degrees and 10 degrees at the same time. So those are sort of incompatible settings. And the way that PCT would argue that people resolve conflicts is through a trial and error process called reorganization, where people introduce a change um, into the, the, the control systems. And if the effect of that change is that people experience less difference between the way they're experiencing the world and the way they want to experience the world, then that change will probably persist. PCT has been applied in a wide variety of uh, disciplines, so in neuroscience, robotics, sociology. In the field of healthcare, the, the main impact so far has been in the field of psychological therapy. So there's a, um, a transdiagnostic cognitive therapy called Method of Levels, which directly applies PCT principles. And uh, my PhD work that I completed last year was a feasibility randomized control trial of method of levels for people experiencing first episode psychosis. And the reference is there if anyone's interested to, to, to find out more about that. And the, the other interesting application is this idea of patient-led scheduling. So this is uh, a way of moving away from having very prescriptive appointments, health appointments for people, and acknowledging that people will make changes at different rates and will therefore need different frequency um, and duration of treatments. I mean, it's a way of allowing people to, to, to regulate their own health care needs. And there's been some really interesting work on that as well. So in terms of nursing, PCT doesn't provide a prescriptive guide for nursing practice. Um, 
arguably provides something more important, which is a, a, a theory of routine human functioning uh, and how that functioning can be disrupted. So what Tim Carey and I argue in the paper is that the function of healthcare professionals, including nurses, is to enable people to maintain or restore control over important aspects of their lives. And importantly, people accessing healthcare are best placed to judge what support they need to regain control over their lives rather than health professionals. So those are some of the key things from the paper. So thank you for listening. I hope you found this very brief introduction to PCT uh, interesting and it's given you some food for thought. Uh, if you wanted to find out more, I've, I've added a few of the main papers there that I referenced in the talk and uh, very happy for people to contact me directly if uh, they want to find out more. Thank you.